Okay, uh, sure. This is Yao. Uh, I'm currently assistant professor at UC Santa Barbara, and this is a work collaborated with my colleagues at uh, Google Research. And what are effective labels for augmented data improving robustness with auto label? And then, so first, what is robustness that we discussed in this paper? So the first type of robustness that we are considering is out of distribution. So that is the test distribution might not be perfectly aligned with your training distribution. For example, like you might train a, the stop signs in sunny days in California, but then like you need to test, you need to drive your car into like New York in winter. And then like the self-driving car might fail to work under these unexpected weather conditions. And even worse, the models might make a wrong prediction, but the model usually just gave us a very high confident prediction. That means that the model is currently making a mistake, but the model doesn't know that it is making a mistake. So that, may, uh, that indicates that we cannot rely on the model's predicted confidence to make a further like a decision. So other than the out of distribution uh, robustness, like another type of robustness is adversarial robustness. That is for the stop sign case, like for humans, like uh, the stop sign image is just imperceptible to us, but the model in class, a self-driving car might just uh, fail to recognize what the true cause. So what can we do about these robustness issues? Like uh, the accuracy uh, drop under distributional shapes, the adversarial robustness and uh, the uncalibrated prediction. So actually one of the uh, fundamental building blocks for improving models robustness is to do data augmentation. So for example, uh, in order to improve out of distribution generalization, we can augment the training data by other transformations. So for example, here, like uh, you want your model to be robust under snowy days. And then here, like you might just create some images under rainy days. So the key message that you try to convey to your, uh, to your model is that, okay, don't just recognize stop sign on sunny days. There are other weathers that you should recognize it. And then we find that if we do data augmentation to train the model, the model is not only be more correct on the distributional shape, it can also have a better calibrated prediction. That is, the confidence will be more aligned with the empirical accuracy. Then like the confidence is a good indicator for us. For example, if the model has an accuracy around like uh, 80, then the predicted confidence might all might also be around 80%. But uh, when the model has an accuracy around like 50%, and then the model's predicted confidence will also tell us, okay, currently I'm just 50% sure about my prediction. So if you think it's too low, then just uh, humans can come in. Yeah. So now here for standard data augmentation, usually we just reuse the one hour labels for all this augmented data, because we assume that we don't change the semantic classes. And we can also do the same, uh, like uh, the similar thing for adversarial robustness. That is very famous adversarial training. So we generate some adversarial examples in the training and then we teach the model to recognize these patterns. And then it turns out that it works pretty well in improving models adversarial robustness. And then similarly, we also reuse one hour labels for very standard uh, adversarial training. So are we down? Because so far, like we've already seen that data augmentation is a pretty good technique, but are we down? So here is an image that is augmented by the clean image actually. And can you tear the class of this image out of 1000 classes? Because this image is augmented from ImageNet. I guess it might be hard. Like roughly you might have a sense, but it's hard to locate it out of 1000 classes. So the key point is that, okay, so given the original clean image, we can do some transformations, but some of the augmented images might be still very close to the original image, but some of them might be already being further away. And then under this case, we might ask, like, should we just still seemingly reuse these one how labels for these highly corrupted augmented images? And then note here, the augmented images are all generated by Augmix or state-of-the-art augmentation technique. So like as long as the magnitude of the transformation is increased and then like uh, the 
it can result in the, the augmented images that are images that are very far away from the original images. So for the for the question, should we reuse one how labels? Just simply reuse one how labels for these augmented images. So the answer is actually no. And the ideal case is that we want to assign different labels to different augmented images. And here, when I say that different labels, it means that we want the labels to have a different confidence. So as an example shown here, the, for the clean image, like for humans, we can clearly identify it's a car. And then for the one hour label, like we just use a one hour label assigned with a clean image, indicating that, okay, the model should be 100% about the true class of this image. And then when we augment the image to be like uh, the image showing on the top, so it's still very close to the car. So then ideally like uh, the assigned confidence in the training label would just be like a 0 0.91, uh, 0.91, it's just still very close to one hot. And we evenly distribute the remaining probability to all other classes. However, if the transformed images has been further away as shown in on the bottom, so the assigned labels should be, should be ideally the confidence of the labels should be reduced to an extent. Like it, as an example shown here, it might be 0.1. 52, because for humans, we might, mm, like, we can still see it might be a car, but uh, maybe the grass would be the ground truth. That's also possible, right? Okay. So the key idea here is we want to assign different labels to different augmented images, but the augmentation happens during training. And like as a best solution, the, the best labels would be you just uh, hire humans to label all these augmented images. But of course, it's very expensive. And even if you ask a person, okay, can you tell me what's the, what's the confidence that you know about the ground truth? It's also very challenging, right? And so the idea is that can we automatically learn the confidence in these training labels with algorithms? Okay, to this end, we propose auto-label. The first step of auto-label is kind of like we need to group augmented data based on their transformation distance. So the good news is that the transformation distance can be naturally approximated by the magnitude of transformation. So for example, in adversarial training, the transformation distance can just be evaluated, estimated by the, the size of the adversarial perturbation. And in standard data augmentation, the transformation distance can also be approximated by, for example, the rotation degree, the translation, the crop size, all those stuff. Yeah. And then after we group the augmented data based on their transformation distance, the second step is also very key. That is, we want to update the training labels based on their calibration performance. The key hypothesis here is that we don't know what the true ground, the true labels of all this training data but we always want the model to be very calibrated. That is the model's predicted confidence can be a good indicator of the true empirical accuracy. So therefore for each subgroup, uh, like uh, the training, the augmented data, like we have a training set that we have transformed by some augmentation, some types of transformation. And then we will also do the same transformation to the validation set then we can create a corresponding augmented validation set. And then the key idea is that we assume if we have already successfully assigned effective confidence in the training labels, this should lead to a very calibrated prediction on the validation set. And then if that's, if this is the case, then that means we can based on, we can just adjust the training labels the confidence in the training labels based on the calibration, calibration performance on the validation data. And then we can just successfully build a feedback loop. So specifically, if we find that, okay, right now the model, are over, the model is overconfident on the calibration, uh, on the valid, holdout uh, augmented validation set, then we should reduce the confidence in the training labels. So, if the model currently is underconfident, that is the confidence is lower than the empirical accuracy, then we wanna increase the confidence of the training labels. 
And then in this way, I like uh, during we can just uh, keep updating the confidence in the training labels. And then finally, the confidence of the training data will converge. And uh, the, the key idea can also be formulated by a calibration guided updating rule. That is for each subgroup, the one max here is a confidence in training label. And uh, the confidence and the accuracy uh, and the ECE is a calibration error are all measured on holdout validation set. And then the key message is that when the confidence is higher than the accuracy, that means like a confid uh, the sign will be plus, and then we will just uh, uh, reduce the confidence in the training labels. But if the confidence is lower than the accuracy, that means the model is underconfident, then we want to increase the confidence in the training labels. And then the calibration error here is always higher than zero. And it's kind of like uh, to control the step size of uh, the updating of your uh, the confidence in the training labels. So in general, if the confidence equals accuracy or the mo more precise calibration error equals zero, then the updating will converge, like will stop. And then uh, next we will see how does auto label help standard data augmentation? Okay, so as we said, like as a standard data augmentation, the usually just uh, re uh, simply reuse uh, one hour labels and the random here we apply auto auto label to random org and org mix. Each of them involves 10 types of different transformations. And other than the standard, uh, like simply reusing one hour labels, we also compare with like uh, adding standard label smoothing, which is just to smooth your labels, smooth the confidence in your labels to a same grade for all your training data. And then here we uh, report the accuracy and the calibration error on both the CIFA 100 and CIFA 100 cropped. So know here, the because the CIFA 100 cropped data set includes 15 different types of corruption. And all these corruptions are unseen during training. So there are no overlap between the augmentation types and the corruption types. So we just want to ensure that, okay, we, we just perform all these things on the standard data augmentation. And then we can see that auto label can effectively improve models accuracy and especially can contribute a lot reducing models calibration performance. And the benefit of auto label, of course, is much more significant on corrupted data set because the goal is kind of like when when your when the augmented data in your twenty uh, in your twenty set becomes more and more corrupted, how do you deal with the true label? And then how about adversarial training? That is like uh, for standard adversarial training, we also use we we'll also use one how labels. Should we also apply auto label on top of it? So the first part is that we do standard adversarial training, but we will use a very smaller adversarial perturbation because the target here is that we want to see how adversarial training can benefit accuracy and calibration. No adversarial robustness here. And as we know that if you still want to maintain a high clean accuracy, like the involved adversarial perturbation shouldn't be very large because if it's very large, uh, you will suffer from the clean accuracy job. And then here we can see that when you use, uh, here we compare with a vanilla model, which no adversarial training, and uh, also adversarial training, and adversarial training with label smoothing, adversarial training plus auto label. And then we can see that actually by, uh, with our auto label, actually like adversarial training is a very good tool for us to improve the accuracy on corrupted data set. And especially the calibration error has a significant job. So this indicates that adversarial training is not only a tool for us to improve adversarial robustness, actually it can also be used for us to improve other robustness issues like a distributional robustness and a calibration. And also because we involve adversarial training, we still wanna see how it can help adversarial robustness. And here we show the figure the x axis is a uh, epsilon max used in adversarial training. That is, we gradually we we have different bounds of the adversarial perturbation that you will add it into uh, into the training set. 
and the the the, uh, the left figure reports accuracy on clean data, and the right figure reports accuracy on standard PGD attacks bounded by 0 0.03. And the red line is our model, adversarial training plus auto label. And the blue line is standard adversarial training using one hour labels. And you can see that actually with auto label, the, a better way to assign the labels for adversarial examples. We can also see a bad, again in both clean accuracy as well as adversarial accuracy. So that is kind of like uh, indicating also like uh, our assumption that although like uh, these adversarial examples might be imperceptible to humans, but uh, the true distribution, distribution of adversarial examples have already been gradually further away. So like uh, in that case, reusing one how labels might not be a good idea. Okay, uh, that's all of my talk and 